one of the most polluted, toxic, and historic bodies of water in New York City may finally be on the road to recovery. Coney Island Creek was deemed the dirtiest body of water in a study done by iQuant and Y because of its high concentration of sewage and toxic matter. It is now being investigated by the Economic Development Corporation to find a solution to prevent flooding. The creek was responsible for most of the damage in the area during Superstorm Sandy. A community meeting for local residents, EDC, and project contractors was held to receive some input from locals about the possibility of building floodgates and tidal barriers. Residents were skeptical. The tidal barrier is a regulatory nightmare. It will be decades before it's built, if ever. I'm tired of going to things that consist of putting little stickers on little maps and little pieces of paper. It's like we're out of the third grade. I'd rather see a natural plan over floodgates. You place floodgates and you lock in the creek, you're going to slow down the tidal flow of the water and make the water more stagnant. I don't blame anyone for being skeptical of any uh, type of man-made government structure. At the same time, the, the city does have an obligation to study what is possible, what does make sense. So far, it's just a study. So just to be clear that there's no actual plan on the table. There is a lot of history in that creek. And I've always said that in order to address our future, you have to address the past. The past tells a story of a creek, long neglected and highly abused. Its wildlife and salt marshes were one of the original attractions of Coney Island, when it was actually an island. As the area began to develop, much of the salt marshes were destroyed, and the Brooklyn Union Gas Company and a garbage incinerator were built in their place. For, for decades, the city never had a permit and they burned garbage, and all that toxic ash fell into the bay and fell into the creek. In the 1960s, parts of the creek that used to cut across South Brooklyn to connect to Sheepshead Bay Canal and many smaller creeks were filled in to create Shore Parkway. Illegal dumping of industrial waste continued. The creek now couldn't flush itself out, so the narrow dead end became a stagnant pool of toxic sludge. There are some wicked, wicked sediments down there that are heavily toxic. The area towards the mouth of the creek, which is the western side of the creek, is relatively clean because we still have a lot of water flow going in and out of the creek. But further east, it gets stagnant, and there's coal tar, still benzene, and it's very dangerous on that end. We did our own independent study of what's down there. We found mercury, arsenic, lead, some of the worst toxins known to man in very high concentrations. The garbage incinerator and Brooklyn Union Gas Company are now defunct. The creek has managed to cover the toxic sediments on the bottom with a thin layer of sand and mud. But the surface is still coated with oil, tar, and garbage. While the narrower part of the creek is extremely polluted, the mouth of the creek has essentially become a rusting ship graveyard. Locals have told me that people used to leave their old ships here to rust or even set them on fire because it was easier than getting rid of them properly. The ships, along with an infamous yellow submarine, now serve as an attraction for some, an eyesore for others, and an artificial reef for marine life. The water quality certainly sustains life. There are, there are bluefish and there are horseshoe crabs, and it's still a breeding ground for fish as well. How safe is it to fish in those waters? Uh, there's fishermen that come from all over to fish by these waters. Families fish by the bay not for fun. They actually fish to have a meal. But the creek doesn't only attract fishermen. A few divers have investigated the creek from within and found some surprising things. It was one of the most incredible experiences of my life. To get into it and sort of experience it in that moment as a natural environment, as a whole place unto itself, was really sort of phenomenal. It just felt like um, discovering Coney Island Creek in a way that you couldn't do from the surface. Well, the first time I went, I was surprised on how clean it was. I was expecting it to be worse. 
you know, it needs it needs work, but it wasn't this polluted, unbelievable, you know, Guanas Canal stuff that would come out. You know. We actually found two historical shipwrecks that we still need to investigate. We found that in 1954, a ship called the USS Bennington was returning home from Europe after World War II, and one of its missile barges capsized into Gravesend Bay, spilling thousands of missiles and bombs all over the bay. And we asked the Navy to verify if this was in fact true. The Navy sent a ship down to Gravesend Bay, and they sent a team of divers, and they actually said, yes, this did in fact happen. Uh, they tried to recover as many bombs as they could, but they couldn't find them all. So in addition to the toxins and chemicals you have buried deep in the bay and by the creek, you have bombs from World War II. Councilman Traeger says that's why he's been fighting the city's proposal to build a garbage dump station by the creek. He says it will dredge up the bottom, re-releasing toxins, and possibly triggering one of these bombs, which may still be live but residents are more concerned about the city's inaction on flood prevention. Artificial coastal uplands such as these have already been built to prevent the creek from flooding into the neighborhood as it did during Superstorm Sandy. Most of the residents oppose a floodgate plan, but what's the alternative? We have an opportunity to possibly even expand and increase our wetlands footprint. And I think that's the first thing we should do as a natural barrier and let wetlands do what wetlands naturally do, abate floods. We're starting from some place that's already been so heavily impacted that whatever we do here is going to be okay as long as it's done thoughtfully and improves that body of water which has been so mistreated for so long and really deserves, I think, to be taken care of and re-emerged as a beautiful place. Despite everything that's happened, despite our worst efforts, this creek is still alive and there's still a lot worth saving in it. Hannah Kleiger, reporting from New York City.